So this is a cast iron plant, aptly named because it is tough as nails. Hey, you found us. My name is Art. I'm Kendall. And we're here to talk about... Plants. Of course. Of course, we love them. Let's get moving. Let's go on a trip. Let's hit the road. Absolutely. Jack. Here's some photos from a... A trip that you took. A mountain bike trip, of course. We... Smile and enjoy the woods. Isn't that nice? It's kind of a lame sign with the same tree, just smaller. Anyways, it I is. could critique the sign. You... And do you really need a sign that says you don't? But smile and it, it enjoy just, the woods. Does I, that enhance the? It made me stop to take a photograph because I just thought it was happy. So this looks like Eastern Piedmont scrub pine yeah. forest. Yeah. But this does not. No, indeed not. That is. You a... definitely don't need a sign that says <laughs> "Stop and enjoy the woods." That tree when you're will stop there. you in your tracks. Not only is the tree immense, but look at the size of the fern. I mean, that's it's, that's human size, isn't that amazing? That's unreal. That is just fantastic. So that's out west. That is. That's in, not that is east in, coast. That is in the Pacific Northwest, out <clears> in Washington <throat> State, and it's just mind-boggling. There's some more. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? a mountaintop experience it is it is amazing you're you're hiking so high i mean you're so in the clouds when was this this was not this summer it was a, two summers ago two summers ago yes. when we could travel but we well, can travel again we can travel again so we're gonna hit the road again where are you going we're gonna go to new england this year never been you've never been to new england no i can't wait and i have of course my bucket list of plants that i need to see i want to see the hydrangeas so and the lilacs boston new hampshire we're going to go maine. up to maine we're going to go to the national park yes I, acadia yes very excited sweet very excited so isn't this is this is one thing i love about the pacific northwest the ocean the the forest goes right up to the ocean mm -hmm. And then there you are at, at the ocean. It's just just amazing. Is this phenomenal? Look at the Beautiful. Ah, love it. it. Makes you feel like at the same time small and in the perfect place. Yes. Yes. The, the, the ferns. Just I know. It's just so lush and so green. This is actually that was actually a um, that's a tropical that's a that's actually a rainforest in the Olympia National Park. Isn't that neat? Just Very cool. Fantastic. And that's your son. That's my oldest son. He lives out there, yes. Okay. Oh, man. So, now, that looks like a goofy conifer. Oh. I mean, huge. This is this is a monkey puzzle no tree. No way. Yes. Monkey puzzle tree. I have tree. never seen a, that big. Is that incredible? That must be 50 yes. years old. Uh -huh. Is that amazing? So, they're, they're used as landscape trees out there. Just... You just that is awesome. stop your car and go, wait, what? So you just literally were driving by, stopped your car. Oh, yes. Yeah, we drove around the block. We were on our way <laughs> to a trail. I said, oh, no, <laughs> we, we need to check this out a little closer. Amazing. Oh, All right, so that. this is, I'm only showing you one picture. Last week, we were in West Virginia. Okay. We took a hike to see a, this really nice gorge on the New River. <sighs> and, but what, this is way before we got to the Overlook. That and, is beautiful. Um, there was mountain laurel oh, all over man, the place. Oh, that's gorgeous. And that's a new national park now, right? New River. Is it? I think I it is. And it's a brand, our newest but national park. But we went park. on a hike, and the, the neatest part for me was going through the mountain laurel. It, there were times where it just felt like you were in an enchanted forest. Isn't that it was wonderful? really, really cool. That's beautiful. Just now, no trees around here. No plants. Isn't this unusual? So this was this is the Pacific Ocean. You you're driving through forest, and there are signs that say beach access, and you go, really? We're just driving through beautiful conifers and ferns, and we pull over. You go through the you go through these amazing. So there you conifers. are at the beach in your hiking boots. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Let's go. <laughs> we were hiking. Now this is on the east coast. This is. Very close to the beach. This is. Um, this is actually in Virginia Beach, coastal Virginia. Italian cypress. And what what a look it gives to this property. Isn't that, isn't that fun? It's pretty cool. Do you like it? I would not have thought of Italian cypress right at the oceanfront. No. But it works. But huh? I, I felt like I had just 
you know, travel, taking a little trip. That's right. Well, <laughs> you know, there's lots of plants that either in the name or they come from that region that you can travel just going to the garden center or going out indeed, in your backyard. Indeed. And, and the name, these locality names, they say a lot about the plant. I mean, they give you a lot. Give of, me an example. They give you a lot of clues about, you know, where you can plant this guy. Like Italian cypress. Like Italian cypress. So all Italian cypress needs, which is right behind you, sir, all it needs is dry, warm, warm, dry summers and kind of mild, you know, some damp winters, and they'll perform excellent. So that is an Italian cypress right there. Uh-huh. So one of us, at least here in this, this group, has a serious problem with taking pictures of plants when I'm traveling. I, okay. I, I can't stop. I just want to. I just want to photograph every single plant where we go, and it's it can actually be a little bit of a problem. So I try to contain so myself. I got the picture here. Very good. Excellent. So we don't necessarily have to go to Tuscany to get a feel of being in Italy. We can have it right here. Well, wall -worthy. this camera is wall worthy, but I would say you would keep it at home if you're traveling. Oh yes. Why wouldn't you just take use your phone, your tablet? Anything you have to... I mean, because you drop things. <laughs> right. As the important thing is to take take photos of these amazing plants. Yeah. I mean, they just they say so much about where you're going. Even if you're going to Grandma's house. I mean, you're just... You expect things to be there when you go to Grandma's house? When you're traveling? You, <laughs> you might want that swing to still be in the same tree. Maybe. Right. You might expect the same manicured shrubs in front of the house, the gardenia to be in bloom and right. all that. So when we go to the beach... I think I want to, I, I feel like I expect to see some palm trees, some oleander, except at the Pacific Coast. That was just a totally different look, so it was a great experience. When you go to the mountains, you, mountain you, you saw mountain awesome. laurel. Mountain laurel. Yeah. We saw ferns and conifers. So, so give me some more examples. Okay, Let's talk some start. plants. We're going to start with. Are we going all over the country we're gonna, we're or all go, over the globe? We're going all over the globe. Not Antarctica. No, sir. We are not. <laughs> we are not. We're going to actually start. With Manhattan Euonymus. Okay, because nothing says cool. nothing says big city sophistication uh, like Manhattan Euonymus. Interesting art. This is actually named after Manhattan, Kansas. Isn't that? Ah, fun? that makes a lot more sense. Isn't that interesting? So Manhattan Euonymus, um, that it came from, it was developed in Manhattan, Kansas. So it gets very cold in Manhattan, Kansas. That tells me I can probably grow this in a lot of places. Very versatile yeah. plant. Great evergreen Let me shot. get some shots here. There you go. Please do. This grows like five by five, and it's just a great variety. But um, Look at this uh, little flowers over here. Isn't that fun? I chose not really thing. notable for the flowers, no, but they are fun. And it gets a little berries, of course, after the flowers develop. So I thought this was super fun. So we're going to go for me. It gets huge. It does. It's a large, fast plant. Watch out. Plant. This is in a three gallon. It's a great shrub, though. But it's really cool. Very. It's, very, it's kind of elegant. It's very useful in landscape. I mean, you can use this. It makes a great screen if you want a little privacy in your space, but I like it. I like it a lot. So, you know, we've, we're going to go from Manhattan straight across the country, Art. Hollywood. To Hollywood. It's off to L.A. So this plant is called Hollywood juniper, common name Hollywood juniper. It's a, it's a variety of Chinese juniper. Let me get a picture of it here. But you know, Japan actually introduced this plant in 1920 to the West Coast, and it was so popular, people loved it so much, it came to be referred to as a Hollywood juniper. Hollywood juniper nice develops. Nice berry set on this thing. Isn't it great? But it gets these really awesome arms on it, and it's a, it can be rather large growing. 15 feet tall, 10 foot wide. Great as a Looks specimen. great. Isn't it gorgeous? This is a really nice one. Very interesting. You can make a hedge out of it. At the coast, it develops a really cool, gnarly habit about it, but it's a wonderful evergreen conifer. Really a lot of fun. One of my favorites, for sure. Love it. Love it a lot. Hollywood juniper. Hollywood juniper. That was our little visit to the West Coast. So now we're going to go, we're heading south now, okay? All right. So... That. Not South America. Though. No, no, sir. All right. Something's come between us, sir. But you know, 
This is a variety of crepe myrtle called Atalgaville. Okay. There's a little town in Alabama, Atalgaville, population 873. Tiny little town. But when I think of Alabama, I think hot, humid. Right? This is the guy. If you want a tree that can, that can bloom and take the heat all summer long. In fact, in fact, crepe myrtle has the longest bloom season of any tree on the planet, Art. Is that amazing? Are you serious? Yes. Of any tree? Of any tree on the planet. Between 60 and 120 days. Crepe myrtle. You get a lot of bang for the buck. Isn't that amazing? Please don't murder these things. <laughs> Please don't. But this variety of Togaville has these vivid purple flowers. There's, um, it, there's Biloxi. Yeah, Biloxi. What else? Other crepe myrtle town names. Hmm. Most of them are Indian names. They are. I would have guessed that this one was an Indian name, but... No, talk about a little town in Alabama. So, when this was developed, I said, oh man, this is going to be, this might even be even more heat tolerant crepe myrtle than ones we're familiar with. So, yeah. love it, love it so very much. Um, and crepe myrtles have pretty fall color. They get beautiful orange colors in the fall. Great plant. Really great plant. Really is. I'm going to slide this guy out of the way. Back to you. And we're going to grab that in the other This variety is Rose Creek Abelia, and these were just sheared. We sheared all of them. They were all sheared at the same time here at the farm. Rose Creek actually is a little, um, it's a little creek in Georgia, um, Oconee County, Georgia. And this was actually developed in Deering, Georgia. Oh, we got a few blooms. Oh, uh, yes, we do. There's actually a lot of buds. That's why I selected this one. This is going to be beautiful. Develops little white flowers about now, down, summer into the fall. But Abelia is evergreen. Because he was developed in Georgia, his, his hardiness zones are seven to nine, so it's very, very, very hardy plant, and it's evergreen. Great variety. Compact, doesn't get huge. Three feet, about four foot wide. Even though we're shearing it at this time in the nursery, doesn't mean you need to. No. If you had this in the ground at home. No, but this was, this is going to flush out with some nice Correct. new growth in the next few weeks, and I'll have lots it's of flowers. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be stunning. We specifically timed this this cuts to show this guy off, but I love a billion. It's just such an easy plant. Rose Creek. Rose Creek. And I did not know that was named after a mm -hmm. little creek in, in Georgia. Yeah. Oconee County, Georgia. Okay, so now we're going to kind of head, um, we're going to actually head to... Let's see, where do we want to go from here? Let's go to, um, let's go north, shall we? All right. Let's go north. Let's go to we're, Ohio. We're trucking. You were just in Ohio recently, I was. Sir. This is a Fothagilla Mount Airy. Now, I would have thought. I thought North Carolina. I would have thought something else, too. But actually, there's an, um, there's an arboretum there in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes. Where this was developed. <clears throat> was the arboretum called Mount Airy? It's called Mount Airy, indeed. So, Fothagilla is a fantastic, fantastic plant. Because this was developed there in Cincinnati, it has a very wide range of hardiness. The, the leaves are so cool. Isn't it These amazing? Are amazing in leaves. In the fall, the color is Just tremendous. Just the way they look, the way <sighs> they feel. And it has white spikes of fragrant flowers in the springtime. Beautiful and I love shapes. saying the name. Fothagilla. Yeah. It's just, it is. It just flows off the tongue. Really a lovely, lovely plant in the landscape. Extremely hardy. Because it was developed in Cincinnati, Ohio, um, they actually just discovered this growing out there. It was, it's hardy to zones five to nine. So that's a, that means we, it can take a tremendous amount of cold and a lot of heat, but it's just a great, wonderful plant. It's a deciduous shrub. It'll drop its leaves. Kind of fun thing about it, you know, plants plants set their buds really shortly after blooming. So he's, he's about ready he's to go. He's ready to go. He's, he's ready to go. Bring on, bring on But fall. not until... Not till next, next spring. Next spring. Yeah, he's ready to go. Isn't that lovely? I love it. Hardiness zone? Five to mention? nine. Five to nine. Isn't that amazing? All the country. Yes. Fantastic. That's good news for this guy. That means he can get And this is native. Over. 
to a large portion of yeah. the United States. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? I Pretty love Pretty much it. that that That's zone, five to nine, mm -hmm. this would be native to. Yeah, isn't that fantastic? Love fossil fuel. Man, that needs to go to the top of some people's planting list. It does. It's just a, it's just a good, hardy, beautiful, hardworking plant with lots of interest. The fall, I can't wait. And then the next few months, gorgeous oranges, purples, yellows, beautiful colors coming up here in the fall. It's a good one. Okay, well, we've already traveled to Europe with our Italian cypress, but we really need to make a stop in France. Mm -hmm. Some lavender? Indeed, sir. Provence. Lavender, to be specific. So, oh, isn't that nice? I know, I wish they could smell this. It's really nice. Wow. So this actually is a hybrid. It's a cross between English lavender and Portuguese lavender. But this variety was developed this to take more. I didn't even know Portuguese lavender was a thing. I know there's Spanish, yes. English, French. Mm -hmm. But this is a hybrid between the two. So um, because of that, it, it's very cold tolerant, very heat tolerant, and especially very human tolerant, which is wonderful for us here. We grow this here at the farm, and well, we're pretty hot and humid here in our areas. So isn't that wonderful? This is a great. It's like great. you could get high just. Yes. Smelling it. I mean, look at the root system. I knew this was coming. Ah, oh, that is perfection. I like Very it. dry. That's how we want it. That's how it likes exactly. the nature. What a great plant. We're traveling this summer. We don't have time to water everything. This, this one is perfectly happy. This one is parched. Yeah. But look. That's what they want. That's the tricky and part. And he's not flagging a bit. He's like, sure. That's right. I'm glad to be dry. So some people go to the Eiffel Tower. I might want to go visit a lavender field in France. After Provence. I see, after I see the Eiffel Tower. Okay. Are these for our travels too? Yep, that's when we return home. <laughs> so. You're not ready for these yet? yet. I'm just going to set these here until we're, we're ready for them. We're still in Europe. We're okay. heading back to America very soon, but this is this is a really neat plant. So. Jolly old England. Yes, it is. Okay. I mean, it's pretty nice, but it seems kind of plain to me. <laughs> it is rather <Robin laughs> plain. So it's a London plane tree. It's a great tree. This For is, shade. This is one of the hardest working trees on the planet. Now we thought. Great, Can tell me why? Because this was this was a natural hybrid that was discovered a very long time ago. So during the Industrial Revolution in London, they learned that this tree helped to clean the air. There was a lot of smoke, a lot of soot, and this tree actually is one, is a tree that they claim best removes little particulate pollutants in okay. the air. Isn't that amazing? So he's one of the hardest working trees. If you're in a factory industrial situation, set way back in the day before we had lots of wonderful regulations that we do now. Right. This was a guy that helped clean the air. What a hard working tree. London plane tree. It's hard to get a picture of it. I know, he's so big. But a naturally occurring hybrid, so it's platinous acerifolia. This variety is exclamation. Isn't it lovely? Exclamation. Exclamation. Because I think He's large and in charge. It gets big. It's a big guy in the landscape. Very large growing, very stately <clears throat> tree. Very pretty. And as it ages, it develops beautiful, beautiful bark on it. I like this guy. I feel like you're growing rather attached to it, Art. Just I like it. Holding on to it. I think we guy. need to take this tag off he's, soon. He's kind of getting a little tight on there because he grows so fast. It's a great plant. Um, before <clears throat> we head back to America, I was kind of thinking. I, I like the leaves. Oh, I, just, I would mention, like, I always love it when it's, there's something that's really cool and fun. It's kind of almost fuzzy, isn't it? It's it really is neat. fuzzy. Yeah. It's a great like, thing. I love Ellie Agnes. Oh, I do too. I love Viburnum. Yes. Um, yeah, I really like this. It's wonderful. Because you're just walking around your yard, you just yeah. pull a leaf. And they get and big. And you just walk around. It's and like, they get big. It's a big, big leaf, big plant, big, tr just fast growing it's kind of a large and in charge kind of guy good for shade london plant tree yeah who needs one of those uh, stress balls right when you can just 
Exactly. Get yourself a leaf. Just grab a leaf. Of a London it, it plane is, tree. It is. You do want to grab it. So this is Yoshino Cheer. Where is Yoshino Cheery from, sir? <clears throat> Japan. Asia, Japan. Yes, okay. From, there's a there's a Mount Yoshino in Japan. It's actually called Somai Yoshino, and this this tree, this one tree, ch- cherry ornamental cherry variety, is the the most planted cherry ornamental tree on the planet. There's more variety. There's more Yoshino cherries than any other variety of cherry tree. It's so amazing. So beautiful. There are actually festivals. The United States has one, a National Cherry Blossom Festival, which is in DC. This is the guy, Yoshino Cherry. There's international festivals of cherry tree, but it's just phenomenal. There cool. Was, there was one tree that was bred, one, and every other Yoshino Cherry ever since then came from that one hybrid. Are you serious? Vegetatively propagated. So how long ago was this? That it would have been. I want to say it was in the 1800s. Isn't that amazing? It's it's really hard to argue that there's a better cherry. Yeah, it's it's been it's been propagated vegetatively by cuttings um, or grafted ever since then. Isn't that amazing? Beautiful fall color. In addition to the, you know, we think about the when it's in bloom. I mean, it's it is stunning. I mean, that's just. It's just absolutely beautiful. But the fall, we get a second action of beautiful, brilliant orange foliage color on it. And then look at the bark. <clears throat> Isn't that beautiful? It really is. It's just a lovely, lovely color. So this is an ornamental tree. It's not a fruit tree. Correct. It does produce very small ornamental fruit, but they're just a seed. Yes, absolutely. Very, very beautiful. Can't say enough nice things about this guy. And it's just, it's beautiful in the landscape. I mean, it's just, it's just. Mature really nice. size? Here, in our area, I'd put them about 20 foot by about 25 foot wide. be a little bit wider than tall. And how far up would you be pleaching it? This is. As it grew, it would just depend. Maybe six feet, eight feet. It would just, it would just depend. Because I do love that striking line. Isn't that pretty? It just. The older it gets, the more beautiful that it ages very nicely, as hopefully we do. <clears throat> okay. I'd love to take this out of the pot. I'm sure you And would. look at the roots. I know you want to, but... Um, it's a little difficult. Yes. Okay. All right. It's a good thought, though. So we're headed back to America now, sir. And we're going to... I think we're going to fly on into Tennessee. All right. So this is a little... That was quite a journey. Wasn't that quite a journey? We did it quickly, too. So this is a little... um, It's a forest iris. Um, It's a crested iris called um, Cristata Tennessee White. Isn't that cute? So this is about as tall as it gets. So because it grows in the woods, um, it's very drought tolerant. So it gets about two feet wide, about six inches tall, very fragrant, lovely little white flowers. Um, when, in the springtime. Okay. And this was developed um, out of, it was Don Shadow developed this, out okay. of Winchester, Tennessee. So that's kind of in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains. So again, that tells so us. So he just found it, yeah, is what he did. But that tells us a lot about this plant. If I came from the Smoky Mountains in the woods, then I can grow in the shade. I don't need a lot of water, and I'm going to be pretty cold tolerant. I was out in, that's going to be around 6B out in the Smoky Mountains, so it's a wonderful plant. I know you want to do it. Should I? Yes. Yeah, you, you couldn't do the cherry. Oh, he's a little loose. A little yeah, loose. not bad. Mm-mm. He's wetter. We keep him wetter than we That's do That's right. Our lavender. All right. Now, there's a reason we saved this guy for last, because we're headed back to the, the old homestead. homestead. <laughs> so, so Verbena homestead. Ver, Verbena homestead. So, Verbena canadensis, actually, this is a variety of Verbena canadensis, and this is actually indigenous. This is native from Virginia down to Florida. So, if I were indigenous from Virginia to Florida, I feel like I, would, I could handle this weather pretty well. Our crazy coastal, east coast weather. The heat, the humidity, downpours of rain. What a tough, amazing plant. 
the critters don't eat him. Look at the buds on him. Isn't that wonderful? This is one of the first um, perennials we have blooming here at the farm. It's, it's, it's coming in early in the season, real early in the season. March, mid to late March, it's blooming, continues blooming throughout the season. Now, it typically blooms, it would seem, about two weeks on and two weeks off. So he kind of takes a little bit of a break, blooms again, takes a break, does it again. So it's just a really, really neat plant. And it seems like it maintains its foliage here through the wintertime art. So it's an evergreen perennial here in Virginia. But this variety is a low growing one and it will actually root as it grows along the ground. Wonderful ground cover. It really spreads a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a good plant, yeah. It, uh, easily you could space these four feet apart. Does it climb at all? I've never seen it climb, but it will as it spreads along the ground, it will develop tendrils, it will root to the ground. That was a pretty nice journey. It was. It was. Spread around the globe. Good job, Kendall. To see some you fun, put a lot of planning into to that. To see some fun plants that there's, there's so many. There's, there's so many. You want to ask plants. them to, if they can think of I would love one it. that you forgot? I would love it in your travels. And I know you've been to some amazing places out there and seen some incredible plants, but please send them in to us. Man, I'd love to see that. Gosh. Because I, I can't go, you know. It makes me work a lot, and I can't, I can't go everywhere to see all the amazing plants. So send them to us. We'd love to see it. Keeping with the travel theme, we're going to watch an uh, excerpt from an episode that was from a show on Amazon called The Grand Tour. Okay. It's by the guys who did Top Gear, which was a British car show that ran for more than a decade. Okay. Really famous three guys who test out cars. Are we going well, to England? In this show, no. They come to us, to Detroit. Okay, perfect. And so they're, they're heading to Detroit. They go all over in this show okay. uh, looking at cars. And I, I haven't watched very many of them. I think this might be the first episode. Okay. The Grand Tour. Well, it's snug. Upstairs, four bedrooms. And here's the kicker. An independent granny flat with its own kitchen. So Jeremy can live up there semi-independently for as long as he can manage. And the price, $2,200. Yep. So they what? found this house in Detroit. So really only... What was it? $2,200? $2,200. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? So I'll and show you something lovely. else amazing. And so, after Watch driving their cars all over... this eco allotment claptrap. I haven't fallen for it, and it's not claptrap, it's just a it's vegetable. It's a bit of garbage. It's only a food. bit. Yes, buy food, grow it. Why not? It's a farmer's job. Turning a city into a vegetable <laughs> garden is ridiculous. No, who's turned a city into a vegetable garden? That's what they want vegetables. to do, and you're just encouraging them. Detroit should be for petrol heads. It should be for massive V8s like our cars. It's a great idea by a city that's having a bad time and trying to use this initiative. What's wrong with it? And it's not as if there's any vegetables in the shops. Who <laughs> is better? I am not listening to any more of this. I am going to go off and going to find a shop. I'm going to come back with burgers. He's, burgers. You can have some curly He's going kale in there. And... allotment. Just because he's become a vegetarian doesn't mean that absolutely everybody has to be. <gasps> oh, no. Don't be a moron. Well, I can't get out. He's blocked the way. He is a moron. I can't look. I can't look. Oh. 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 Art. That's bad. I can't. This is awful. I'm sorry. This Did is, I traumatize this you? This is terrible. Oh. <sighs> so that's what car people do to plants. I guess. It's pretty annoying. Well, I've not yet tried to grow a tree in a vehicle, but that's that's coming soon, perhaps. So I, I'm going to find where he lives. Well, what's interesting, <laughs> he, he's playing an act. Yes. He's just, he's an actor. He probably loves so plants. The, I just saw that on Amazon now, he has a show that's called Clarkson Farms. The guy owns a farm, and his farmer that has farmed it for him retires, and so he takes on the job. Awesome. And the whole series follows all of his failures oh. at farming. Well. So I think he gets his comeuppance. That's fantastic. That's yeah, fine. we'll check that out later. Oh, we have to check that all out. All right, we've already done the Wallworthy. Let's look at a plant pop film. Okay. This is one of the more recent ones we did. It's by a filmmaker team in Richmond, Virginia, Stephen Ferris and Kevin Gillingham. Okay. And it's about a lovely artist. We're going to watch a minute of the film. It's probably about five minutes okay. long. 
I always wonder if everyone else feels the same way of like, oh my God, we gotta stop because that is so beautiful. I've like either gotta capture it or just make you guys stare at it so you feel like I feel, I'm feeling right now. When I'm past a certain flower or, uh, you know, bouquet that's in a vase, it's, my goal is to just capture it and, and share that experience or that feeling of just, I mean, beauty. You just want everyone to see what you're seeing and experience what you're experiencing. And some people won't, but the goal is to make people stop and think for a second. And that's why it's so hard to paint a sunset. And same for a flower. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's just hard to capture things that are so precious, just like life. My mom and I used, used to go pick our plants together like so when the when spring came around it was like you know then we're we're gonna do that we're gonna go to a great big greenhouse and buy a bunch of plants that may or may not live long <laughs> that's beautiful that's oh i love her work so she, she mentioned one of our customers great big greenhouse mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. that's mostly there's a high proportion of our plants that are in great big greenhouse got you yes sir so that's cool, but that's not why we made the film. Um, I did think it was odd. She, she goes on from there. She mm -hmm. breaks down and cries really? about her mom who uh -huh. passed away and how it's her inspiration. So oh, wow. love for you to go watch the whole film. You haven't seen it. I have not. I wanna, well, what's wrong with you? I want to see it right now. This is this is amazing. This is a brand new one. So well, thank you just you need to go to Plant Pop. PlantPop.com. Okay. You can find all the films we've made. Wonderful. Um, including this one. It's one of the more recent ones. It's lovely. I really liked how she talked about the goal, her goal as an artist and why does she choose plants? Because she's not a plant person who then took up painting and like, right. oh, well, I'm going to paint flowers. Right. Instead, she's a painter who said, I want to do something that's meaningful and capture beauty. And I do it because it's hard. It's yes. hard to do. Um, I just think it's really cool. And it's wonderful to see her perspective of the flower itself. I mean, she, it, it almost like just kind of comes to life there. It, had, it took on like a different, a different Yeah, did you like her work? Yeah, I think it's beautiful. Really, it was very lively. It felt good. I like it. Cool. All right. I'm going to have to leave in a minute to go watch the rest of that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's wrap up with a plant for the inside. Okay. This is, this is a good one today. So... You know, art, it's, it's traveling season. It's vacation time. Yes. You know, we're going to be gone for great lengths of time um, because we have other plants we want to see all over the globe. <laughs> right. So this is a cast iron plant, aptly named because it is tough as nails. Aspidistra, wonderful plant. This is evergreen here in our area outside. <clears throat> outside. It's a wonderful house plant. It just performs so well inside with, with low light. It is so we're zone seven. Yes. If you went up into zone six. Might be pushing probably it. Probably not. Might be pushing a little bit. But but here in south, it'll do great. And again, it's a large surface area, which means low light. So um, it would be shaded in the afternoon sun if you're going to use this outside. But inside our homes, I mean, isn't that elegant? It's just, this to me just... It's so striking and just so beautiful and has just a lush... So why do you call it an in indoor plant? Because it will... This be, is a landscape plant. It is a landscape plant, but it, it's also very happy inside of our homes. It doesn't need a lot of attention. And in our homes, you know, we're, we don't want plants that we have to do a whole lot to. That's what makes them a very good performer inside our homes. And it's just very striking. It has a wonderful, to me, nice strong architectural just look about him. It's just he's bold. I love it. How big will it get? This is a pretty big one. Isn't that lovely? Um, outside the landscape, height wise, maybe three to four, about four foot tall. And it just the clump just gets larger and larger, which can easily be divided. Nice sharp shovel. You can separate them and have some more some more baby cast iron plants. But I love this plant. Just it's simple. We're, we're not looking for flowers or fruit. We're just enjoying the beautiful foliage. Nice, bold texture. All right. I love it. Thank you, Kendall. I love it, too. Thank you, Art. Thank you for joining us this week. Don't forget to please send us your photographs of the 
all of your amazing travels, especially. We'd love to see where you go and all your wonderful plants that you find. And um, just driving down the road, gosh, I see lots of fun things. Sure. Make a lot of quick stops. Send us a photo and... You get an amazing t-shirt. Right, thanks. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. Bye-bye.